ladies and gentlemen, the graduating class of spring 2017. Like the I'd like to ask the audience to please stand for our national anthem and remain standing for the invocation. The national anthem will be led by a current student of the nursing program, Maria Picace. Maria? Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light What so proudly we hailed At the twilight's last gleaming Whose broad stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight All oh, the ramparts we watched who are so gallantly streaming in the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star spangled banner yet the land of the free and the home of the brave. Thank you, Maria. Okay. At this time, I'd like to ask Dr. Barbara Blake Campbell of the nursing department to give the invocation. Dr. Campbell? Thank you. Lord, grant us strength and wisdom for the journey ahead. Make us understand that although this mantle bears the mark of distinction, it also bears the mark of sacrifice, sacrifice to self. May we all find great meaning in life by serving others. May we be agents of healing to all whom we encounter. May we make a profound difference to all entrusted in our care. May we be just, true in all our dealings. May our minds and hearts be filled with noble virtues and lofty intentions. May our motives be transparent and true. May we be vessels of love and compassion. May we see beauty and light in this fractured world around us and have enough hope to know that peace and unity are our universal pursuits. And although no individual alone can change the world, together we can create ripples of good that transcend the furthest borders of our planet. May we challenge ourselves and others to build bridges where there's division and affirm that humanity is our greatest capital. May we make the world better than we came and pass on a legacy that our ancestors would revere. Although we will see people at their worst and at their best, May we forever be ready for the test. Lord, give us wisdom with every word we speak and grant great measure of patience to listen as we comfort the sick and the weak. And as our day slips into night, may it be said that we have done what's right. Thank you, Dr. Campbell. Audience, please be seated. Graduates, please be seated. They do nothing unless I say so. <laughs> At this time, I'm going to ask my colleagues who are nurses and any other nurse in the audience, please stand so these members who want to enter the profession can honor you and applaud you. So my colleagues and any fellow nurses. Okay. 
We'd also like to take a, a moment to honor anyone who has given service to their country, any veterans, any current members, be it a student or an audience, please stand so we can salute you. Thank you. At this time, I'm going to ask Professor Anne-Marie Menendez, chairperson of the nursing department, who will give the chairperson's address. Dr. Call is going to go first. <laughs> President Call, <laughs> President Call to give an address. Thank you, Dr. Call. Thank you. Welcome to family and friends, faculty, and especially graduates. You know, I look at this class of 2017, each of you as individuals, with great pride and admiration, feelings I know are, that are shared by your faculty who were here today with you. Congratulations to each and every one of you on your accomplishments. You chose the most difficult program at Queensborough. Each year, hundreds and hundreds of students aspire to be in our nursing program, and very few actually even get into the clinical. When you began your cohort group, there were only 76 students who began NU 101. And among you, of that 76, 41 today have survived four or more semesters of clinical practice and incredible studying and stress. But here you are, and we congratulate you. You are victorious, you are happy, and you deserve this great celebration and the opportunity to take a breath, just a quick breath, before you start studying for your licensure. So over these years, we've tested you, and you have certainly tested yourselves. You've sacrificed in small ways and significant ways, as have your family and friends who took this journey with you in many ways. You were as much survivors are you, as you are graduates, and I know you share this triumph with your friends, with your family, and even though you wondered along the way, am I going to survive this? Is it worth it? It is, isn't it? What a great day for you. So you come, this, ladies and gentlemen, this is, this is an amazing group. They come from all over the world, largely from the United States, but they also come from Africa, Asia, Southeast Asia, the Caribbean and Eastern Europe. Very diverse group. I'm always proud of the fact that we attract and graduate so many men in this noble profession. And today, 22.5% of this graduating class happens to be male, which is probably two or three times the national average. I think 2016, it was 12%. So congratulations. That's very good. Now, 44% of this group already holds a degree. Very interesting associate degree, baccalaureate degree, master's degree. But all of you plan to continue to study in the field of nursing. And 30% of you hope to get a doctorate. Now, I cheer that because I assume then, eventually I'll see some of you sitting here, right, as your faculty. It wouldn't be the first time, and we're always so blessed. When someone decides to enter the nursing profession, they, it means they choose to help people in need. Professional nursing responsibilities have changed considerably over time. Today, nurses are highly respected and valued members of the healthcare team who bring their own body of knowledge to the process of healthcare and who collaborate with physicians and members of other healthcare disciplines to meet patient needs. Nurses remain the human component in the healthcare delivery system. And in earning your degree, each of you has been uniquely prepared to reach out to those in need, filling the void of human caring created by clinical environments 
and it truly is a grave responsibility. You are a member of the most trusted professor profession in the world. It is your calling to be there for people in pain and suffering, those in fear and those who are moving on to worlds beyond us. Take a moment to reflect on your role as a nurse and the importance that you play in the community. Relive those special moments when you realized how much you made a difference and the satisfaction that you felt in knowing that you were able to help someone, if not to give them hope, to give them comfort. It is an honor and a privilege to serve as you will and to possess the skills that you know, we know, you uniquely hold. As graduates, you will bear the tremendous responsibility of upholding the values of a time-honored profession. Core values that are held in common, whether in the United States or across the globe. Values that dictate beliefs and behaviors in your profession. Honesty, responsibility, pursuit of new knowledge, belief in human dignity, equality of all patients, and the desire to prevent and alleviate suffering are among your primary goals. You've chosen this profession to help others in need and to improve the quality of life for all. That mantra has not changed since the days of Florence Nightingale. And these core values will carry throughout your clinical careers. Your professionalism will be judged by your personal behaviors and how you present yourself to all those around you. And through those behaviors, you will tell the world who you are. You are a nurse. So graduates, you've discovered many things about yourselves. Keep them in mind. We know, and you know now, you have extraordinary talent and discipline. We know and you know you can survive any obstacle. And you know that you make a difference in many, many lives. Friendship and laughter are sustaining, whether the worst of times or in triumph. And today you have triumph. Enjoy today as the close friends you've become and as members of the 2017 graduating class. So from this day forward, please remember and I quote one of the predecessors of Professor Menendez, do take time for yourself. Stay curious and remember Queensborough, the faculty, the staff, and the students who took this journey with you. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you, Dr. Call. Professor Menendez, Chairperson of the Nursing Department, will give an address. Professor Menendez. Hello. Welcome, everyone. Congratulations, graduates. I am happy, happy to welcome you into the profession of nursing. I am from a family of nurses, and this spring, I welcome a nephew and another niece into the profession. I am excited for all our new colleagues, but I am also keenly aware of the challenges and responsibilities that lie ahead. Nursing practice is very different from the days when I entered the profession. Nurses today work in high stakes, fast paced arenas. The acuity of patients has increased while the length of stay has decreased. The time nurses have to notice and address needs of their patients is limited. This impinges on the demands of safe practice. In a recent journal of issues of nursing, Huston posits that nurses' knowledge doubles every six years. Chris Tanner, an international leader in nursing and a consultant on our first dual joint with Hunter, by the way, often writes of information overload. She notes that on the effort to be more comprehensive, we struggle with which some refer to as info obesity. In other words, the information in the field of nursing and healthcare exceeds our ability to take it all in. As nurses, we must become knowledge brokers. 
When I looked up this definition in the dictionary, it defines it as a person who functions as an intermediary between two or more partners in negotiating agreements or the like. Nurses must acquire the necessary knowledge, use their knowledge to solve problems, advocate for their patients, and provide safe and effective care. This is what we as nurse educators call clinical reasoning. You are leaving Queensboro with a strong foundation. You've been tested in the clinical setting, you've been tested in labs, critical elements, you've been tested in the simulation center with fast-paced um, clinical scenarios, and you've been tested in service learning projects where community members present with varied health needs. For you to continue to be successful, you must seek ongoing mentoring and support. You must learn the culture, styles, and policies and procedures of your workplace. In other words, you must leverage all resources of the system to obtain the necessary knowledge to meet the desired outcomes for your patients. You must be knowledge brokers. You become lifelong learners and you begin this journey by obtaining your bachelor's degree. As nurses, our knowledge is power, power used to heal our patients and comfort them. It is a tall order but remember, you are a Queensboro graduate, and you are ready for this challenge. Godspeed and congratulations. Thank you, Professor Menendez. One more speech. Awesome. The students have selected Professor Janice Malloy, of the nursing department, to give the congratulatory address. Professor Malloy. Good afternoon, um, friends, family, faculty, and graduates. Congratulations to all of you. It is my honor to be with you today to deliver the congratulatory address and celebrate the culmination of all your achievements. You have been tested mentally, physically, emotionally, and on the computer. <laughs> Congratulations, you have passed them all. You are a resilient group of women and men. Resilience, as defined by Webster's Dictionary, is the ability to return to the original form after being bent, stretched, or compressed. You have survived all of these states. Pretty remarkable. SBAR, otherwise known as SBAR, is an acronym used in healthcare for situation, background, assessment and recommendation. It's a way healthcare professionals communicate effectively with each other, and it allows for important information to be transferred. Here is an S-bar for the graduates of spring 2017. S for situation. During this stage, the goal is to briefly communicate what's happening, provide information on the patient and their status. QCC's S for situation. Dot, dot. 41 nursing students are graduating. Yay. Admitted two years ago with successful completion of course objectives, exams, critical elements, and HESI tests. Reason for admission, dot, dot, to join a profession to become a healer, an educator, a good listener, and care for people at their worst with a spirit for service. B for background. The goal here is to be able to identify and provide the reason for the patient's admission, status, and history. The QCCB for background, dot, dot. 41 students have entered this noble profession to improve lives of people in need and to work hard with ethical integrity and open-mindedness. The A of SBAR, A is for assessment slash evaluation. At this stage, the situation is surveyed to determine the most appropriate course of action. The QCCA for assessment slash course of action is be your own best friend. Let mistakes and regret lead not only to a lesson, but also self-forgiveness. Walk humbly into your patients and respect their lives, their views, their challenges, weaknesses, and their vulnerabilities. 
and lastly, R for recommendation on the SBAR acronym. This is possible solutions, explanations on what is needed at this time. QCC faculty recommendations. R, replenish the education you received here. Keep going, never stop learning. Rejuvenate, rejuvenate your personal wellness often. Keep your reservoir full. Revisit your reasons for entering this profession and represent us well as you serve your patients. Expect little and give much. And remember Winston Churchill's quote, we make a living by what we do, but we make a life by what we give. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you, Professor Malloy. Okay, so we've come to the candlelighting portion, moment you've been waiting for. I just want to remind you or just instruct you that the lights are gonna be dimmed. And at this time, we're going to be calling each graduate's name. I beg you to hold your applause. You've been waiting, some of you, two, three years for this moment. So I ask you to hold your applause until the end, and you'll get ample time to celebrate as I celebrate with you. Assisting me will be Dolores Paul, who's gonna be the incoming Student Nurse Association officer. Okay. The following, fa uh, fa following members of our staff and faculty will assist in the candle lighting, Professor Lorraine Capelli and Ms. Barbara Caravanas of the Nursing Resource Center. Marvin Jules. Azim Ali. Mitchell Wong. Diana Rodriguez. Maria Victoria Sanchez. Iwana Jukan. Chandra Hussein. Ilan Mulajanov Anakin Ekpo Rigoberto Garcia Nessa Rubinova Diana Kalandarova
Hasina Syed. Karen Trentacosta. Christina Gonzalez. Stephanie Mejia. Jane Choi. Justine Castro. Fatma Issa. Larissa Neri Goncalves de Andrade. Shafiza Hamid. Daniela Cruz Rivera. Samantha Lavoy. Chanel Bright. Jung Suk Che Jean Stigliano Kayla Pichardo Jin Wei Jing Melissa Corsby. Irish So. Chloe Velasco. Emily Ayala. Harjot Kaur. Jisun Park. Catherine Walsh, O'Neill Peterkin, Robin Garcia, Ladies and gentlemen, the graduating class of spring 2017.
Thank you. Thank you very much. You're a very good audience. <laughs> I appreciate that. Um, at this time, the graduates will recite the nurses pledge. It will be led by three members of the outgoing Student Nurses Association, O'Neill Peterkin, Catherine Walsh, and Ji Sun Park. I will strive with all my being and with the help of God to become an open, honest, kind, and diversified individual. In doing so, I will attain the qualities essential in the practice of nursing. For it is only after realizing one's self-worth we are able to promote that of others. Deliverance of high quality health care is of essential importance. But let us also reach beyond a treatment or diagnosis. And remember that entrusted to my care is a human being with all the loves, hates, fears, and idiosyncrasies that are an integral part of the human species. Let me not grow too comfortable in my knowledge, but actively seek out new information or continuance of my education. Being a nurse requires continuous growth. I dedicate myself to this cause and my life to the profession of nursing. Thank you. Graduates, you may extinguish your candles. Graduates, please be seated. At this time, Robin Garcia, the outgoing president of the Student Nurses Association, will give the farewell address. Robin? <laughs> Hello and good afternoon, everyone. On behalf of the Student Nurses Association and the graduating class of spring 2017, I would like to honor and welcome the president of the college, Diane B. Call, Vice President of Academic Affairs, Timothy G. Lynch, Vice President of Student Affairs, Michael Hodge, Vice President of Strategic Planning, Assessment, and Institu Institutional Effectiveness, Karen B. Steele, Nursing Chairperson, Anne-Marie Menendez, faculty, friends, and family to the 2017 nursing candle lighting and pinning ceremony. Thank you all for coming to celebrate such a special day in recognition of all, all, all our success, hard work, and achievement in completing such a vigorous nursing program. Today marks the beginning of our, of our nursing careers that we have dreamed and worked diligently to achieve for the last two years. It is crazy to think that we once walked in this program as rookies, and now we leave today as professionals, armed with our associate's degree in nursing, 
now having the privilege and responsibility of caring for the sick, shedding the light of health, always teaching our patients and families, and furthering our education will be our lifelong mission. Once again, thank you professors, friends, and families for making this happen for us as your endless support has kept the drive within us going to attain our goal of becoming registered nurses. I want to present to you on this stage the graduates who are strong and highly motivated individuals that never gave or took an excuse to stop them from making their aspirations of becoming a nurse a reality. We are a diverse group of different ages, different ethnicities, and different walks of life, but with the same ambition to one day care, advocate for, and do whatever it takes to improve the care for our patients. Nursing is a profession that is always undergoing change. That being said, I can say that we are prepared and best fit for the job due to our group being the one that underwent the new curriculum. However, we take this as a positive experience as this was a good preparation for the reality of the workforce and overall making us stronger nurses, ready and up for the challenge. Now, allow me to take this moment to reflect on our two-year journey, which we have saved on a flash drive in our brains called the QCC nursing program. Let us not forget those prerequisite days when getting an A was actually possible. Let us never forget the excitement and nerves we experienced when we had to come in for our interview. Some of us came in overly dressed, hoping our looks would help in the decision process. <laughs> Trust me, I am guilty as I came in a full suit and anyone would have thought I was the groom. <laughs> Let us not forget that moment of joy when we received our acceptance letters and we all texted each other and some of us became tachycardic because we didn't receive ours until the next day. Let us not forget receiving our uniforms in the mail and ordering our first stethoscope and having no idea what to listen for. <laughs> Let us not forget critical elements and math exams, which we always hope to pass on our first try. Let us not forget our first time for everything moments, such as making our first bed, giving our first bed bath, giving our first injection, hanging up our first IV piggyback, and most importantly, taking our first nursing exam and walking out in shock of how different of, of an exam it was. Last but not least, let us not forget the good night's sleep we would get after taking an exam, dreaming that we soon have to start again and study for the next one. Trust me, this journey was not easy, but we can say that not only did the professors, family, and friends help us get through it, but as well as our patients. We can all admit that we had our moments of wanting to quit millions of times, but our patients and experience in clinical always reminded us of why we wanted to become nurses and that we love what we do. It was, always a, it was always a humbling experience to be able to make our patients smile for the littlest things, advocate and be there for them in their toughest times. And most importantly, some of us even helped save our patients' life. The beauty of nursing is that patients may forget your name, but they will never forget how you made them feel. The graduating class and myself cannot thank you, professors, enough for your devotion, support, and always having our best interests at hand to see us succeed and to make it to this very moment. Like our parents, you have seen us grow into mature professionals over these two years, and with no doubt, we shall continue making you all proud representing the QCC nursing program as newly grads. I want to give a special thank you to Professor Soto for introducing to us the fundamentals of nursing always telling us to view our patients in three parts, the body, soul, and spirit, because the man is more than the sum of its parts. Thank you, Professor Spencer, for enlightening us with your positivity and humor to help us cope with our stress throughout the program. Thank you, Professor Weber, for your optimism and always telling each and every one of us, you got it. Thank you, Professor Malloy, for teaching us the meat and potatoes of what we needed to know for the exams. And we will definitely leave today not only with our nursing degrees, but as well as our detec detective badges on. Thank you, Professor Rosa, for preparing us for the real world as we will make you proud by continuing, continuing to demonstrate professionalism in all the facilities and our institutions that we may work in. Thank you, Professor Menendez, for introducing to us the practice of mindfulness, as we will take this with us and apply it to our everyday lives and remind ourselves to always take it back to the breath. Most importantly, thank you, Professor Bentley and Georgillis, our SNA advisors, for helping and guiding us through our time as the SNA cabinet of the spring 2017 semester. I would also like to give a special thank you to my cabinet members for contributing their time, effort, 
and support to make the semester go smoothly, helping and mentoring the nursing students in the classes below us, and of course, making these senior events happen, making the memorable moments that we will cherish forever. I would also like to thank Dolores Paul, our new incoming SNA president, for helping me keep my promise to advocate and provide services for the evening students. I want to give a shout out to my amazing treasurer, Jisun, for being my right hand in every aspect of the SNA, along with our epic study sessions with Kate. For those who know me, of course, I have to mention my best friend, Mitch, who has been through this journey with me <sighs> since the prere prerequisite days. And look at us now, graduating. <clears throat> <laughs> lighting our candles and being pinned on the stage together. Before I end my speech, I would like to give the biggest thank you to my beautiful mother, who has been my number one supporter. She has provided her shoulder for me to cry on many times and has been there at my best and at my worst moments, always with that encouraging word that well and that well-needed hug only mothers can give. I have no idea how I, can, how I can ever repay you, mommy. This year is definitely a special year as my gift to you is my achievement. Today, mommy, I am not only your son, but not your nurse. I love you very much and happy birthday. Te quiero mucho, feliz cumpleaños. <clears throat> to conclude, I would like to share with you all a quote to do what nobody else will do, a way that nobody else can do, in spite of all we go through, that is to be a nurse. With that said, I present to you the graduating class of 2017. Thank you. Thank you, Robin. Okay. This time we're gonna have the presentation of pins. But before I do it, I'd like to thank, I have a team in the back, John and Mark. They've done this so many times, I would not be able to do this without them. I also wanna thank uh, Professor Tina Baer for her assistance. Okay, so we're gonna get rid of our pins. The students have selected the following faculty for the pinning, Professor Mary Ann Rosa, Professor Janice, Janet Francis, Professor Lawrence Jim Bentley, and Professor Barbara Rome. Graduates, please rise.
Ladies and gentlemen, we have come to the end of another amazing candle lighting ceremony. The graduates invite you for some light refreshments in our new beautiful atrium in the science building. There's some student volunteers that will direct you. Thank you so much for coming and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thank you.